And it is Monday evening right here on Victory Channel. My name is Greg Stevens. It is Victory Update for June the 15th. Can you believe that? One month, one month away from tax day, by the way. Thanks for coming, Tim. <laughs> June the 15th, 2020, it's a Victory Update for Monday. We are on Facebook, of course, all the time, plus the Victory Channel uh, right here on Dish Network and, and so forth. And Tim, the tax man here, uh, is with us. So, Tim, I want to officially introduce it's good you, to be Tim here. Fox. Yeah, it's good to be I, I feel welcomed, by the way. I feel the love. All throughout the studio, I feel the love. <laughs> yeah, please sign back on. We have a lot of uh, things happening today. The band is here. The music is going to be great. We have a live guest in studio with us today. So tell somebody about it. Prayer number, if you want prayer, is 877 281 6297. 877 in the United States, 877 281 6297. Or you can go to kcm.org/slash prayer and get that as well. We also have some new things and some new product for you, a free digital download. Tim, take it away. Living in Heaven's Blessing Now by Gloria Copeland. This is a mini book. We want you to have it for free. You can download it by going to govictory.com slash morning prayer and digitally download this for free. We want to give it to you just like we do every day. Victory Update. What did I say? Morning prayer? Morning prayer. Yes. I, was on that, I was on that program today. Victory Update. You're, you're thinking go, about the taxes. Go, I was thinking what? about taxes. So, so go hey, let, let's, try, let's try this again. <laughs> Welcome to Victory Update for today on Monday. Tim Fox is with us, and he's going to tell you about free product we have for you, Tim. Go victory.com slash victory update. Get your free digital download. <laughs> we are live today. Isn't that fun? Uh, listen, nowadays... <laughs> You just got to relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. You just got to laugh at things, right? You do. <laughs> if you don't, I keep you'll telling be crying. myself. I was watching something just recently, Tim, with the family, and I said, "100 years from I told my kids, 100 years from now, it won't matter. Won't matter. Yeah, don't, don't. It don't, won't matter. Don't Absolutely. Stress out of it. Yes. All right, here we go. We always show you the news, the current news, in the in the uh, spirit of faith. So here's Mike Garofalo with today's news, Mike. Thanks, Greg. President Trump over the weekend spoke to West Point's graduating class, highlighting the group's diversity and appealing to America's newest officers to uphold the country's core values. You have come from the farms and the cities, from states big and small, and from every race, religion, color, and creed. But when you entered these grounds, you became part of one team, one family, proudly serving one great American nation. The president told the graduates they exemplify the power of shared national purpose to transcend all differences and achieve true unity. And that under his administration, American soldiers will no longer be responsible for rebuilding foreign nations. So far, seven Minneapolis police officers have resigned and more resignations could be coming in the aftermath of the protests over George Floyd's death and the calls to defund the police department. The reason, lack of support from the department and city leaders. Uh, the one moved by the city that reportedly upset officers the most, Mayor Jacob Fry's decision to abandon the third precinct station in the middle of the protests. After officers were gone, protesters set the building on fire. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick recently spoke to Fox News about George Floyd's death and how Americans must turn to God to heal the wounds of racism. We need a culture change to address this racism. You cannot change the culture of a country until you change the character of mankind, and you can't change that unless you change the heart. And for billions of us on the planet, we believe you can't do that unless you accept Jesus Christ or unless you accept God. And I, God has been left out of this equation through all of this. Dan Patrick went on to say the crime against George Floyd was a crime against all of black America and against humanity. Protesters angry about the death of another black man at the hands of police burned down a Wendy's restaurant in Atlanta on Saturday. It is the spot where a 27-year-old Richard Brooks was fatally shot by police for resisting arrest and attempting to take control of a police taser after failing a field sobriety test. On Sunday, Atlanta police released body camera footage of the events that led to Brooks' death. They also announced that the white officer who shot Brooks had been fired and another had been placed on administrative duty. This coming Saturday, President Trump will rally his supporters for the first time in months. The president initially planned the Tulsa, Oklahoma rally for Friday, but moved it after some of his black supporters explained to him the significance of Juneteenth. June 19th or Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated 
commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. While well, Oklahoma has seen relatively few cases of COVID-19, the Tulsa City County Health Director said he wished the Trump campaign would move the rally date back due to an increase in cases. The president's rally will be held indoors at a 19,000-seat arena that has canceled all other events through the end of July. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issued a warning on Sunday for owners of bars and restaurants. Those that allow in large crowds in violation of the coronavirus Restrictions could have their liquor licenses revoked. The threat from the governor comes after numerous viral videos over the weekend showing crowded bars and restaurants. The governor said this is a very real likelihood that an increase in the spread of the coronavirus could lead to a rollback of the reopening of some areas. Cuomo specifically cited Manhattan and the Hamptons as two areas that could see that crackdown. The number of COVID-19 cases in Florida reached record levels over the weekend. This comes as more of the state's beaches reopen to the public. On both Saturday, we are told, and Sunday, uh, the state health department reported more than 2,000 new cases each day. Most of the state is now in phase two of the governor's reopening plan. It calls for bars, movie theaters, and tattoo parlors to get back to business with restrictions. Many of the state's counties reopened their beaches back in mid-April, but in South Florida, that just wasn't the case. Miami Beach has just reopened this past Wednesday. Restrictions such as groups no larger than 10 remain in effect. Racing fans finally got what they've been waiting for on Sunday. NASCAR let spectators in Florida watch from the stands for the first time since coronavirus restrictions were put in place. 1,000 first responders and military families took in the Dixie Vodka 400 at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Everyone was required to wear a face covering. The Racing League is the first major professional U.S. sport to resume during the pandemic. While NASCAR is getting back to business, Major League Baseball is certainly a different story. Pierce Pro ball players may be headed for their shortest season since the 1870s. The problem appears to be a dispute over pay. Initially, players and owners had hoped for an 82-game season, but now it looks more like just 50. Over the weekend, the Players Union reportedly told the commissioner's office that any additional talks about starting the season during the pandemic were pointless and that owners should order a return to work. Now, back to you in the Victory Studio. Thanks, Mike. That's really uh, good stuff to keep up with what's happening, yeah. to let you know what's happening so that you can know how to pray. And that uh, I like that we don't do that in fear. We don't no. do that from a position of... Everything's falling apart. Absolutely. It's the end of the age. <laughs> right. Well, we win. Yeah, we know how, the, <laughs> we know how it ends. Uh, I do want to tell you about something that's very, very exciting that's happening right here on the network and on our property July the 1st. Matter of fact, instead of me talking about it, let's go down to the Revival Radio Studio. Let me show you this from Gene Bailey. Watch this. Hi, I'm Gene Bailey, and I'm seeing here Revival Radio Studios because we're talking about revivals. Listen, you know, at the first half of the 20th century, God showed up in such a miraculous way, and we remember those times because they were all in a tent. Like here's a tent from the Oral Roberts days. Here's a, a traveling pump organ that was used in tent crusades. Right here's a piece of tent from A.A. A. Allen, a chair from one of his crusades that he did all over the country, and eventually around the world he went. God showed up in such miraculous ways in the first half of the 20th century in these great tent crusades and revivals that happened. Well, guess what? Coming up right here, July 1st through 3rd, I'm excited to tell you we're going to have the Faith for Freedom revival in a tent right here on the grounds of KCM. Listen, you want to get here. It's going to be great. Be a part of what God's doing in these days. It's the Great Awakening. And I, I am going to agree with you, Dr. Bailey. It is the great awakening. David, David Ellis. Yes. The tent revival is back big time. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> it is. Coming soon. To a city near you. Yes. Fort Worth, Texas. To a tarmac near you. Yeah. Here's the best thing. Our tent has air conditioning. Well, there you go. So, I mean, it's not going to be, you know, like a freezer, right. but it'll be tolerable has air conditioning to cool you off because we're going to be lit up with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I know Come you're on. excited about Come this. On. I really... <laughs> hey, listen, I can't wait because I've heard Brother Copeland say this more than once, and I think he started in about 2015. 
And it, man, when he said it for the first time, it like sent shockwaves through my spirit. He said, the tent anointing is back big time. You're right. And so um, this is it. Yeah. And we're there. And we are there. And we want you to be part of it as well. Matter of fact, the group is going to sing right now when the praise goes up. Here we go. I'm telling you, if you need some walls to break, you need some chains to be lifted, you are in the right place today. That's right. I'm telling you, you're in the right place. That's the prayer right. line is open for you right That's now. Right. Don't hesitate while you feel the anointing right now. Go to the prayer line, 877 281 
281-6297, kcm.org slash prayer. Okay, it is ministry time. Get your Bible. Here we go. Dr. Terry Mize is with us. He's been, uh, has over 50 years in global ministry with an emphasis on missions and caring for orphans, winning the lost, training Christian leaders about faith and the authority of the believer, ministering God's healing. You need healing today? Get ready. Amen. When Terry and his wife Renee minister, miracles are prominent. They oversee two ministries, Terry Mize Ministries and the Jackie Mize International Children's Foundation. Here's his website, terrymize.com. T-E-R-R-Y-M-I-Z-E.com, terrymize.com. You can watch his podcast on YouTube, Terry Mize Ministries every week, broadcast on Sundays. Dr. Terry Mize, welcome, sir. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. This is an exciting day. Yes, we are honored they're all to have exciting you. days. So what's been happening during all of this? What's God saying to you? Well, this is, this is the time for the church to shine. I mean, this is our day. This, this is the thing we've been preaching the word of faith about the last 50 plus years mm -hmm. and declaring to people that to... Uh, how to not be, the Apostle Paul in the Amplified Bible says, uh, don't be just mere men. Right. You know, we're not just mere men. We're not like everybody else to live under the beggarly elements of this world. And uh, we, we've trained the church to, to speak the word, to declare the word, to confess the word. And uh, it was for this. This is what it was about. Yeah. Terry, your ministry, you've been to a lot of places around the world. Yes, places sir. that some people couldn't go some places that people would not want to go. Yes, sir. You've been in front of a gun that was emptied in front of you point blank range. Sure. The bullets all fell at your feet. The fear that we're living in now, the fear that's trying to surround us, yes, how sir. do people deal with that? Because you've been in situations where you've had to deal with fear. Well, sure. Well, you know, Tim, uh, fear is a real and spiritual force and it motivates hell just like faith is a real and a spiritual force that motivates heaven. Hmm. And, and you're not going to operate in, you know, fear and faith don't live in the same house. And you're not going to operate in fear and faith at the same time. It's impossible. Right. And, and so fear, whenever we operate on fear, uh, it's, it's going, as I said, it's going to motivate hell and cause hell to be able to do uh, whatever. Uh, and yet if we operate in faith, then it causes heaven to get involved and do what we need to do. So, so they're both spiritual forces. So Terry, what would you say to someone that says, I, I think I'm in faith in my heart, I believe, but in their head, there's all kinds of doubts sure. and concerns. Sure. Are they in faith or not in faith? Or? Well, you know, Jesus said in Mark chapter 11 that we all love so much. You know, he, he said, uh, uh, whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. He didn't say don't doubt in his head. Okay. You may have a thousand doubts in your head. And that's not going to affect you the way one doubt in your heart is going to affect you. Our heart has to be sure. You know how you talk to people all the time? I mean, I don't care if it's relatives or friends or whatever. And they'll say, well, in my heart, I really know what's right. Well, there yeah. it is. In your heart, your heart's going to know what's right. And especially if you're a Christian, you're going to have the word in your heart. And uh, Paul said, faith's in us in two places. It's in our heart and it's in our mouth. Mm -hmm. And the only thing is that the, that the, the heart is dependent on the mouth yeah. to get it out. Yeah. So, you know, you might be walking down the street and your, your heart and mouth have a conversation and your heart says to your mouth, say, hey, mouth, uh, let's let's be cool today. Let's be tight with God today. Let's be in agreement. Uh, don't don't deceive me because the word says if, if whoever uh, uh, doesn't bridle his tongue, but thereby deceives his own uh, heart then that man's religion or faith is in vain or don't let him think he's going to get what he's believing God for. So, you know, your mouth says, okay, heart, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Well, you've got faith. I've got faith. Everything's great. And then you walk down the street and see one of your friends. They say, hey, buddy, how you doing today? And your heart says, I'm great. I'm healed. I'm blessed. I'm prosperous. Everything's well. Uh, I'm the head, not the tail. And, and your mouth says, well, you know, I don't know. I didn't feel, feel too good and didn't sleep well last night. And they're, they're firing people down. And, you know, the COVID virus is coming. And, and your heart Heart begins to scream at your mouth. Yeah. You deceived me. Yeah. You deceived me. You deceived me. So, so we've got faith in our heart and we've got faith in our mouth, but we're dependent. The heart's dependent on the mouth it's that to simple. get it out. It's, it is that simple. To, to just hook what you say mm -hmm. up with your spirit. Absolutely. Your yeah. Absolutely. Of, so in other words, we should resist giving people a piece of our mind. 
Do we, yeah, give them a piece of your heart. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, good. that's what you need to do. Because we're, our heart's going to speak the word of God. Our heart's going to declare the thing that's right, but it's dependent on the mouth to get it out. But you know, whenever you're talking that hitchhiker story you're talking about, I, I was a missionary in Mexico and uh, driving through Mexico, 24 years old, and uh, there was a man standing on the side of the road hitchhiking. And so I stopped and picked him up. I thought, well, that boy needs Jesus. So I'll, I'll witness to him, you know. So I picked him up. And as, as, as he got in the car with me, and I had a tape uh, in the cassette player by Kenneth Copeland <laughs> on the integrity of the Word of God. Kenneth was just preaching and I was driving. And all of a sudden, uh, I get this guy in the car with me and I just left the tape on. I figured, you know, Kenneth could preach to both of us. <laughs> and so uh, uh, as we were, as I was thinking in Spanish, I wasn't paying attention to this guy because I was thinking, I've got to talk to him in Spanish. So I was trying to get my Spanish together to say what I wanted to say. And I turned to say something to him and he reached into his coat and pulled out a pistol. And he cocked the hammer and he reached over and shoved it hard into, into my ribs. I'm driving the car and he, he hit me hard like that. And he reached up with his left hand and grabbed my collar. So he's got my collar pulled over like this and while I'm driving. And he's got the gun here. Wow. And then he screamed at me, I'm going to kill you. Only oh, this is all in Spanish. Te voy a matar. And, uh, and it made me mad. And I said, I'm a man of God. I've got authority over you in the name of Jesus. You can't kill me. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't understand that. That just totally freaked him out. Yeah. So he poked me hard with the gun again, yanked on my car. And he said, I said, I'm going to kill you. And I said, well, I said, I'm a man of God and I've got authority over you in the name of Jesus. You can't kill me. But at that point it's when I had to deal with fear because the instant he cocked the hammer and stuck the gun in my ribs, you know, it just shocked me. That'll get I mean, your I, attention. I mean, I'm just yeah. driving and all of a sudden he has this. Pay attention. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm there. Attention. And I'm he's there. screaming to me, I'm going to kill you. You know, my, my heart jumped up in my throat, but yeah. instantly I just said out loud, I said, fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. God's not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Yeah. The word of God says fear has torment, but perfect love casts out fear. God is love. I've got God. So fear you go. And I never was scared again. Wow. Uh, in fact, T.L. Osborne, my dear friend for so many years and probably the greatest missionary ever graced the planet, you know. Uh, Brother Osborne used to tell me, he said, Terry, he said, there's a part in that testimony where, where the hitchhiker had made you walk way out in the cornfield and, uh, and he had you at gunpoint and he took your clothes, had, had you give him your clothes and your wallet and your car keys and everything. Yeah. And then he said, stay here, don't move. And he walked back to the car intending to get in and leave. And he said, and you called him back. And I said, well, yeah. I said, I'd sit there and, and, and I'm in the cornfield and, and stand there in my underwear and my socks. You know, God's man of faith and power in the cornfield <laughs> in Mexico in my underwear and my socks. And, and I said, Lord, you just did a marvelous miracle and he couldn't kill me because he had just shot at me, like you said, right. five times at point blank range, as close as I am to you. And uh, uh, I said, you just did a marvelous miracle and he couldn't kill me, which I appreciate, but he can no more rob me than he can kill me. And I said, I expect you to, to do something. And I'm, I don't know if I was waiting for an angel or right. fire from heaven. I, I was waiting right. for something. And nothing happened. And he's almost to my car with my keys. So I just cut my hands and I said, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come back here. And he just turned around, never broke his stride, came all the way back out to where I was. And, and T.L. told me, he said, that, that proves you weren't scared. Right. He, he said, that's my favorite part of the story because he yeah. said, most of us would be so glad to have our life spared. Right. Let him take the car, let him take the stuff and go. And yeah. uh, at least you're, you're alive. And he said, that proves when you called him back with his gun, that proves that you had dealt with fear and that you weren't scared. I said, no, sir, I was not scared. I was mad, but I wasn't scared yeah. because I had dealt with that. And, uh, and God did that great miracle. But you always have to deal with fear. Great. Always have to get rid of that because, again, it's a spiritual force. You know, you know when you drive down the highway and a car pulls out in front of you and you have to swerve and hit the brake and, right. you know, and it scares you and your heart jumps up and starts beating. You, know, you, you never say, oh, that scared me and grab your head. Right. Because it's not a mental force. It's just, you always say, oh, that scared me because mm, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's in your spirit. Yeah. It's always fear. Mm. Fear is a spiritual force like faith is a is, is a spiritual force. Yeah. And of course, faith is a greater force, but to the devil sells us. Everything the devil does is fear. Mm -hmm. And this COVID thing, you know, I, I, I know it's a real disease and I know people have died and it's tragic and I, I hate it. Uh, but, but yet the fear is so much greater mm -hmm. than the disease. Yeah. And the Bible says in, in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear. Fear will change the color of your hair. Yeah. It'll put wrinkles in your skin. It, it will kill you. People literally are scared to death. Yes. And, uh, and so, and all through the Bible, we see that, Yeah. you know, and it's always a fear tactic. It's always the devil says, this time I'm going to get you, Tim. This time, Greg, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. you, you got out of it last time. You're yeah, not going to make it. That. This, time, this time I'm going to kill your wife. I'm going to kill your kids. This time you're not. And it's just yeah. a fear, a constant, you know, years ago, 
I was flying somewhere to preach in a, in a commercial airliner, and, and I just reached up in the seat pocket in front of me and picked up the airline's magazine. It's not a spiritual magazine, a Christian magazine, just the airline magazine. And I was just thumbing through it, looking for something to read, and I came across a full-page ad by the American Cancer Society. And it said, cancer is not always fatal. But the fear of cancer is always fatal. Oh, my. my goodness. And I thought, well, if they know that, goodness. you know, we, we need to realize how powerful fear is and how we have to deal with it. Jesus dealt with that with the disciples all the time. He said, how is it? Mm. You don't have any faith. You've been with me all this time. You don't have any faith. Why are you so fearful? You know, why are you faithless? How are you fearful? Because you can't be full of faith and full of fear at the same time. Right. You're going to be full of one and empty on the other or full on the other and empty, empty on the other side. Yeah. And it's always a fear tactic. You know, in Daniel chapter 3, we all know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, we, we know that King Nebuchadnezzar built this idol and told the whole nation to bow down when they heard the music. Yeah. And so they played the music and everybody in the whole nation bowed down except three guys. And so, when, and so they got caught. You know, when you're the only three standing up and everybody else on their face, it's easy to get caught. And so they rushed them into Nebuchadnezzar and said, King, these guys didn't bow down and worship the image that you set up. Wow. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar liked these guys. He wasn't mad at them. He liked them. And so he, he said, uh, I'm going to give you guys another chance. Maybe you didn't understand. He said, so, <laughs> so this time we're going to play the music again. And if you'll fall down and worship, it'll be, it'll be well. But if not, you're going to go into the burning, fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. and, and then he asked them a question. This is the whole crux of the matter of Daniel 3. Yeah. He asked them a question. He said, and what God? is able to deliver you out of my hands. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's an easy answer for any of us. That's right. And so they just looked at him and they said, Oh, King, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. You know, we're not going to mince words with you. We're not going to be politically correct. Our God, you want to know what God? Our, our God, God whom we serve yeah. is able to deliver us and he will deliver us out of your hand, O oh, King. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. And it made Nebuchadnezzar so angry. And so he said, I'm going to make it seven times hotter. Mm. Well, 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 so what? You're dead at one hot. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. The seven times yeah. thing was fear. Wow. And that's all it was. Yeah. You bow down and worship. We're not going to do it. Okay, I'm going to make it twice as hot. We're not going to do it. Okay, three times. We're not going to do it. So I'll make it seven, seven times. times hotter. And so you're supposed to get scared and fall down. <laughs> and, and it's always a fear thing. Always. Yeah. And of course, we know the story. They, 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 you know, actually, it's kinder to make the furnace seven times hotter. Sure. Because it'd kill you quicker. Kill you quicker. quicker. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the, the one time hot, you, 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 you just start to burn and right. hurt. You know, yeah. but it was so hot that the, the guards that brought them up there, they died before they even got up to it. It was so yeah. hot. So, but it was a fear thing. Yeah. It's always a fear thing. It was a fear thing with David and Goliath. You know, as soon as David went out there to meet that. Goliath, that uncircumcised Philistine, David mm -hmm. called him, man without a covenant. Right. Uh, it says that Goliath began to curse David by his demon gods. And see, you can't stop that. The devil's going to do that every time. I'm going to get you this time. I'm going to get you. I'll, I'll kill you. I'll kill your yeah. wife. I'll kill your kids. I'll kill and uh, you can't stop that. But then verse 45, I love this. I've got it circled in bells and whistles in my Bible. Verse 45 said, then said David. David. So there always needs to be a then says you. There's always going to be the fear thing come. Yeah. And then, then there needs to be a then says me. Yeah. And he said, you come to me with a sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he, he, and he said, I'm going to take This 17 year old kid didn't even have a pocket knife. And he yeah. said, I'm going to take your head off your shoulders. <laughs> sure. And I'm going to feed your carcass to the birds of the air. And, and, and then he proceeded to do it. Yeah. Cut his head off with his own sword. And right. Just like a teenager, he took that bloody thing, hair, teeth, and eyeballs back up to King Saul. And said, I don't think he's going to bother you anymore. <laughs> yeah, so. But it's I, always going to be fear. You said something just a second ago, and we'll, we're going to take a music break in a second, but I want to come back to it. You said something a second ago. The king said to the, to the guys, yep. who can take you out of my hand? Right. Now, I remember... And I'm trying to remember where it was in the scripture. It says, who can separate, separate me from, from right. the love of God? Yeah. Paul, who can that, yeah. Take, Paul write that. Yeah. Paul will write that. So that's the answer to that. Absolutely. Listen, no one can take that's you right. from his hand. That's right. Amen. He, you are sealed by the promise Amen. of that's right. God. And you are, you. are he's got you just as much as he had Dr. Terry Mize yeah. in that cornfield that that's day. That's right. He's got you. And we want to that's let you good. know that the uh, prayer line is open for you. 877. I want him to minister healing as well as some other things I want to talk to you about. 877 281 
877-281-6297. All right, let's take a break, a music break here with David and the band. Stand in your love, David. When darkness tries to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. Your hope will be the anchor for my soul. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. No fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. Fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing in your love. Stand in shells when I stand in your love. Now shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. I won't be shaken. When I stand in your love, fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Does not stand a chance. Amen. If you'll hook that up to your mouth, Amen. begin to believe that, that God's word is true, you'll see a difference in your life. I Amen. guarantee it. I want to welcome Amen. all of you here with us um, on Victory Update today. We have a guest, Terry Mize, but I want to, some of you, I'm looking at some of the comments that have come in. Um, Renee says, this is exactly what I needed after yeah. my day at my business. This is talking directly to me Praise that God. I am going to not just survive, but I'm going to thrive. Yes. Kent Fox yes. is with me and we have a I special do. gift. Yeah, I want to give this to you right away. Gloria Copeland's book, Living in Heaven's Blessing Now. This is Praise a free God. digital download. All you got to do is go to govictory.com slash victory update and you can have yours free right now today. And let's get back into this discussion because this is really, really powerful. And it is. It is very powerful. We are talking to Dr. Terry Mize, Terry Mize Ministries. Um, he oversees two different ministries and his website information will be up there on the screen. TerryMize.com is how you can get a hold of him. And he has a YouTube broadcast, Terry Mize Ministries, weekly broadcast on Sundays. Dr. Mize. I'm stirred. Yeah. Praise God. And Me I've too. learned that we hook up our mouth now. It's yeah. that simple. Yes, sir. With here rather than here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And then when you do that, everything changes. Well, yeah. Now, we, we just talked about fear. We just sang yes, a song about fear. Yes. But you do a, a lot of your ministry has to do with healing and the healing anointing and miracles. Oh, Tell yeah. Tell me a little bit Praise about God. what you've seen in that. Oh, my goodness. Um, 
Well, all the things Jesus said, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, <laughs> you know, the, the lepers are cleansed. We've had, we, years ago when I was a teenager in church, I'd hear missionaries come through, you know, missionaries would come through and they'd tell these miracle stories. And I'd sit back there in the pew and I'd say, oh God, I want those testimonies. And you know, now I've got them. Thank God I've, right. I've been able to, uh, to travel the, the nations and to preach to people. And we just, we just had to cancel because of COVID. Uh, it, we had a huge crusade, open air crusade scheduled in Pakistan for the 1st of May. Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, they had they had told us we'd have seventy five to hundred thousand people in the crowd. Uh, I had already committed to rent six hundred buses to bring people to bring people in, and then was going to have uh, fifteen hundred uh, ministers in the pastors' conference during the day, and and then this hundred thousand crowd at night. And uh, and, and I so was looking forward to it because you know those miracles. I mean, blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped, cri devils are cast out, tumors fall off, uh, cripples walk. It's just it's just mm -hmm. there's just nothing like an open air crusade. I mean, yeah. God, heaven bends low and kisses the earth and we get caught right in the middle of smack. You know, God, <laughs> God just shows out because they're, they're basically when, when you do a crusade, it's, it's, it's mostly sinners, yeah. you know? And so, so God just shows out and heals these people and helps these people. And of course, when you're doing a crusade to, to sinners, uh, they, they don't have Bibles. So you, you're not teaching, you know, you teach Christians, you preach to sinners. Uh, it's like they would have been all Muslims. Yeah. And so I'm not going to walk on the platform and say, now open your Bibles because they don't have Bibles. Mm. You know, turn to First Thessalonians because they don't know what that is. So where do you start with, with that kind of scenario? Well, preaching or preaching a crusade is always announcing good news. Yeah. It's, all, it's all absolutes and it's all declarative. Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. You know, you tell a story. Uh, Jesus went down the way, and and there was a man uh, sitting by the side of the road begging. His name was Blind Bartimaeus. Uh, he didn't even have a name. They never named him. His uh, bar means son of, and mm -hmm. to, so he was the blind old blind, old Bartimaeus. Old Bartimaeus is blind boy. Is sitting by the side of the road begging, and he cried out uh, and said, "Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me." Yeah. And then and they told him, "Shut up, be quiet. You're just an old poor beggar." And, and he's rattling. Usually he just rattles his cup for a coin, hoping somebody would give him something. But this time he forgot about the cup and the coin and he said, Jesus is passing by. But you preach like that. You preach declarative right. statements. And Jesus said, call him. And they said, sir, good news. He calls for you. And, uh, and so you begin to preach. Uh, I just take two or three of the stories in the Bible of, of, that Jesus did mm -hmm. uh, and, and then follow that up with several miracles we've had. If I'm telling a blind eye open story like Bartimaeus and I tell about some blind eyes open, we've had a raising the dead. Uh, you know, I stood in the jungles of Guatemala uh, a number of years ago, I had a medical doctor, American medical doctor, a friend of mine with me. And, uh, and, and they brought in a little baby girl, just 13 days old. And uh, she was dying of uh, a, a congestive heart failure mm -hmm. and pneumonia. And mm -hmm. we're in the jungle. There's no, I mean, the doctor said to me, I need a pediatric ward. I need a hospital. I need equipment. I need machinery. I need stuff. And of course, you don't have any of that. And, uh, and she died. And uh, the doctor pronounced her dead. He, he took and you know, listened to her little heart with his stethoscope and checked her nostrils and checked her pulse. And he said, well, Terry, she, she's dead. And I picked that baby up and held her up before God. Now, I've raised numbers of people from the dead over the years, and they were always pretty quick, you know, sometimes just real fast. Right. So I thought this one was going to be too. But this went on, Greg, for Tim, for 12 hours. Wow. And, and I and I didn't intend it wow. to be twelve hours. I didn't know it was going to be. Nobody told me, "Hey, this is going to be twelve hours." Right. You know, I just thought she's dead, and I'm here, and you know, the word says it. And so, and I held her up before God and began to talk to God and talk to talk to hell and to talk to her. I'd hold her up and say, "Honey, you'll you'll live and not die. I won't bury you. You'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord." Okay. And and just just and it went on and it went on and it went on. The doctor told me at one point. He said, "Terry." You've prayed every prayer you know. And yeah. I said, you're right, I have. I mean, I remember Jesus cried with a loud voice when he raised Lazarus. From, so I yelled at her in a loud voice. And then I remember Jesus took uh, Jairus' daughter by the hand and said, Talitha kumi, which dam damsel I say unto thee arise. So Correct. I took that tiny little hand mm -hmm. and I said, Talitha kumi. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, and then the widow's son from name, he, yeah. some name, Jesus said, a young man arise. And so I said, young lady arise. I mean, I did everything I knew to do and nothing's happening. And so uh, at, at, at three o'clock in the morning, uh, I, I was carrying, I, I just carrying around, just, just talking to God and talking to hell and, and talking to her. And, and, and the doctor said to my friend, Bobby said, said, Terry, Terry. And he grabbed my arm and jerked me. He said, Terry. And I said, what? He said, Terry, she's dead. 
<laughs> D-E-A-D, <laughs> right. dead. And he said, you've been at this for nine hours. And he said, now put her on the table and we'll bury her in the morning. It'll be daylight here in a little bit. We'll, we'll bury her. And he said, at least you got her parents saved hours ago. Something good came out of this. And he said, you need to go to bed. He said, he said I'm concerned about you. And uh, and I said I said you, I, I'm not going to quit. I said just just leave me okay, alone. Wait, I got I got to find out what caused you. I'm I'm got to be honest. Yeah, twelve At hours. At some point, I'm thinking, okay, she gets I mean, deader by every hour that goes by. <laughs> you're physically getting tired. Oh yeah. Everybody, I've got pictures of me, big old black circles under my eyes. Now everybody I'm, on I'm your team, hell. everybody on your team is telling you right. Stop. And most everybody's gone to bed. I mean, Doctor Doctor Daniel stayed with me, and and uh, another friend stayed with me, but people would come in and out. And, you know, and uh, you know, you usually, go, usually God has told me over the years, raise that person from the dead, or tell that person this, or say that to that person, and I did, and it worked. And the, God didn't say anything to me about her. I just, I just thought, I'm here, she's dead. That's right. not right. That's not the word. It's, and, you know, this isn't right. And uh, the word says, raise the dead. So I just started in thinking it would be real quick, but uh, you know, He said, He said, it's been nine hours. And he said, I'm concerned about you. And I put her down. And I said, no. And so three hours later, six o'clock in the morning, I said, uh, I said, devil, you might as well quit because I'm not going to. Mm. I said, however long you stay at this, I'm going to use the name of Jesus on you. You're going to hear the word of God. You're going to hear the name of Jesus. You're going to yeah. hear the blood of Jesus. Uh, I'm going to hit you with it over and over and over. I will not bury this baby. And I said, I'm in spiritual authority here. I said, you didn't catch me in the States in a hospital where it's mm -hmm. their house and they'll ask you to leave after a while. Nothing wrong with that. I understand spiritual yeah, sure. authority. Yeah. It's their house. Yeah. And I said, but you're in my jungle. I said, it's my jungle. <laughs> and I'm in authority here and you're not going to, you're not going to take, you're not going to do it. And so uh, in a few minutes, he just got discouraged and left. Just a few minutes after six in the morning, 12 hours. And he, and God raised her up and healed her. Wow. And, so how uh, did that happen? What You're holding her the yeah, whole time. Yeah. How did she, she raise up? She, what happened? She re opened her eyes and started crying. My, wow. It was My just gosh. powerful. You know, just powerful. My and uh, what was funny is, uh, you remember Buddy Harrison? Sure. Yeah. You know, sure. sure. Buddy had just started uh, his church in, in Tulsa and uh, Faith Christian Fellowship. And so, and, and he had asked me to come in and advise him from time to time on missions. So I'd blow in and out of there. And, and so I, I told him, I said, hey, I'm going to go to Guatemala in the jungle and do some jungle preaching. And I said, I'm taking Dr. Bobby Daniels with me. And, uh, and he went to the church there too. And I don't know if you remember Bob Lemon or not. He's passed away now. And I said, I'm going to take Bob and we're, and then we're going to go to the jungle. And I said, uh, uh, why don't you set up a, a phone patch? I said, the missionary down there has a ham radio. And I said, on Sunday, I'll, I'll call in, I'll call a ham radio guy and get him to call the church. Mm -hmm. And you have a phone up on the platform and I'll just talk to the congregation from the jungle. They said, that's great. Well, it just so happened that that was Saturday night that this happened. And Sunday morning at 6 o'clock, God raised her from the dead. So four hours later at 10 o'clock when they started church in Tulsa, I just called in. Oh, and, and, told, and told them this. that whole story. Wow. And, and the whole, there's about 2,000 people in church. And I mean, Gosh. they went wild. They, you know, there are, I still got the tape from it, the old cassette tape. There are likely people watching that, that are saying, Terry, I hear what you're saying. You stood up to fear. You stood up to that gun. You've seen miracles in your ministry. How can I get that kind of power to work in my life? How can I see those kinds of results in my own personal life? I tell you, Tim, I think it's just absolute confidence in the Word of God. That God said what He meant, meant what He said, and He's big enough to back it up. You know, it's just, it's just God's a supernatural God. I was going to tell you that little, that little thirteen-day-old baby. She's uh, forty-two now. Wow! And uh, married and got three kids and served God all these years. I still, I still communicate uh, with the missionary that lives down there. You know, <laughs> and uh, when she was a little girl, as she grew grew up to be a little girl, they'd take her through the villages and to, and she'd they'd tell the story about how God raised her from the dead, and then she'd sing songs about Jesus. You know, but wow. she's. She's still uh, alive and well today, but yeah. but it's it's confidence in the word. It, it, I, when I was a teenager, I, I had gone to Panama as a missionary when I was eighteen, and uh, lived with an Indian tribe that didn't wear clothes, and we had to live wildcat style, no catch, no eat. If I went and shot a monkey in the jungle, we ate a monkey. If I shot a parrot, we ate a parrot. If I didn't shoot anything, we ate anything, <laughs> and. Uh, and, and I got really sick. And the missionaries had told me I'd get really sick. And my church had told me I'd get really sick. 
uh, and, and might die and, and, and I'd be poor and all that kind of stuff. And so I did get sick and God, God healed me of it. It was a, it was a bad situation and, and God healed me. And uh, when I came back from there, I, I talked to the Lord about it. I said, I need to, I need to talk to you about some things. And so I, I locked myself in a room and, and heard from God in some areas. God gave me five scriptures that changed my life, changed the way I thought, talked, lived, everything. And, uh, and I've always said it created in that teenager, in this teenage kid, it created an unshakable confidence in Almighty God that I absolutely had no doubts. If I could find it in the Bible, right. then I could take it to the bank. If I could find it in the Word, then I, I knew it'd work. Mm. And, and I think that's what it still takes today. Again, I think this is the time the church should be shining. We're the city set on the hill. You know, we're, we're, we're the ones everybody so needs to be looking work to. That'll work in the United States. Oh. And that'll work in England. Absolutely. Absolutely. If it won't work in uh, if it won't work in America, it won't work anywhere. Yeah. You know. And um, uh, around the world, p people get the idea. Now, now Terry, you have miracles because you you go overseas. Well, well, I used to say that silly thing too, and then I heard myself say it one day, and I, oh no, I'm going to have miracles in the states. Right. I, and I raised my first dead person in the states. Wow. Uh, I was in a church in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, uh, Kenneth would remember, uh, Brother Copeland would remember, he's passed away now, Dr. Doug Fowler. He was a surgeon in Jacksonville, Florida. And Doug heard my hitchhiker story. Right. And, uh, and he was an international director for Full Gospel Businessmen. And so he invited me out on behalf of his pastor. He told his pastor, hey, there's this young kid missionary that's, you know, been shot at and the bullets didn't hit him. And so I came out to, to Florida, to Jacksonville. And... Uh, as, and the pastor asked Dr. Fowler to introduce me to the crowd because he knew me and the pastor didn't know me. And so D Doug was in the pulpit introducing me to the crowd. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there minding my own business waiting to preach. And I, I saw a guy out in the congregation, an older gentleman. I say, oh, he's older than me then. Uh, and I saw the spirit of death come on him. He literally turned gray. I don't know if he really did or not, but I saw him turn gray. Mm, yes. and, and, and then he fell over dead. And, and they had those old metal chairs, so chairs kind of banged around when he fell over. Right. And so Dr. Fowler saw him fall. And then there's an, uh, an ambulance attendant that went to church there, too. And so he ran to him. Dr. Fowler ran to him. And they both pronounced him dead. And, and I could and I hadn't moved. I just sat on the platform waiting, listening to God, just listening. Right. And uh, and so the whole crowd was up to about 400 people. And that's all. And so I couldn't even see this guy. And I'm just sitting there listening to the Lord. And the Lord said to me, go out there and tell that man to not let his heart be troubled. Well, I knew that was a scripture. Jesus said, you know, when your heart be troubled, you believe, believe in God. And so. I just walked out there and said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, made my way through the crowd. And, and they had him laying on, on those metal chairs, just laying out there dead. Hmm. And uh, I got down his face and stuck my finger in his face. And I said, sir, in the name of the Lord Jesus, do not let your heart be troubled. And I command the spirit of death off you. And I command you to live and not die in Jesus' name. And he just went <gasps> like that and got up. And uh, they took him to the hospital. And, and uh, I was back there a year later. And I said, uh, Doug, whatever happened to that guy that God raised from the dead when I was here last year? And he said, you know what? I said, he wasn't saved, wasn't born again. And he said, just came in church that morning and sat down and died. And he said, you know, if he'd said in most churches and died, he'd have gone to hell. But he, right. said, he, uh. said, he said, you raised him from the dead and said, now he's saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and one of our Amen. ushers in the church. Praise God. But see, that was a, an American Sure. That was yeah. my point. I've had right. my, my first dead was raised in in America. Yeah. So. I want to get you to minister to people in just a second. I want to tell you that we have licensed trained prayer ministers right now Praise waiting God. for you. 877 281 6297. There's also moderators right here on Facebook. And those of you that are with us on Facebook, I'm watching comments. Here's uh, Vincent says, I'm in tears listening to this as I'm watching. God. So there is a healing anointing and there's Thank a time you, that's, that's available to you. You do not need to be in fear yeah. concerning the racial tensions, concerning no, right. protests, that's concerning right. COVID 19, anything. You do not need to be in fear about it. Dr. Rice, if you would. Minute, just talk to the people in this camera and minister to them. Whatever God tells you to do, Praise pray God. for them, uh, minister to them, whatever, however the Lord leads you. Take a few minutes here, I don't know, five minutes or so, and, ju and just minister to the people. With Amen. It. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, it's just like Greg was saying, you, you just don't have to be in fear. Fear, uh, I, I knew way back then fear would get you killed. Mm -hmm. And uh, fear is just such a spiritual force that we cannot tolerate and cannot give any place whatsoever. And so, you know, when we're in our open air crusades, like the one I just had to cancel in Pakistan, uh, um, 
you, you know, I kind of grieve over that meeting because if I, if I miss church, you know, I got churches canceled in the States too, but I, that didn't bother me because they're Christians. Right. If they don't hear me preach, no big deal. They're going right. to go to heaven anyway. But I grieve over this hundred thousand. They weren't saved. And I'm just believing God as soon as we can get there, you know, we're going to, we're going to get them saved. But anyway, in a crusade, uh, we don't ever lay hands on the sick. You know, laying hands on six is a good Bible doctrine. Jesus said, do it. But when you got 100,000 people, can't you it. can't do it. So we pray what we call crusade prayers. And so let's pray a crusade prayer for you. We, mm. we just pray one prayer over everybody. I'm not the healer anyway. Jesus is. And we just let the Holy Spirit fall on you where you are and minister healing to you. And then in the crusades, I always tell people, do the impossible. So when we pray for you today. If you couldn't see, I want you to see. If you couldn't hear, I want you to hear. If you couldn't lift your arm, I want you to lift it. Do make your miracle happen happen and do the impossible. Father, in the name Thank of you, the Lord, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You said the anointing of God destroys the yoke of bondage. So I pray right now for the destroying anointing, the destroying anointing, the anointing that destroys COVID-19, the anointing that destroys HIV and AIDS, the anointing yes. that destroys cancer. In the name of Jesus, right now where they're at, I pray the tangible anointing of the Holy Ghost of Acts to flood their body, fill their body, and destroy sickness, destroy disease. Life and death, says the scriptures in the power of the tongue. I speak death to disease. Mm. Die in the name of Jesus. COVID, die in Jesus' name. Virus, die. Cancer, die in the name of Jesus. And we speak life to the people, the Zoe life of God, to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Now, body, receive that in the name yes. of Jesus. Be healed. Yes. Be healed in your bones, in your organs, in Thank your body. You, Be made whole to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Now do something. Do something and act in your faith. Right. Amen. Amen. Here's Sarah. Uh, Sarah, I see your request here. Please pray for teeth and gums. Teeth and gums. Something with her, with her teeth and gums. And we're agreeing with you right now in the name of Jesus yes, for your yes, teeth and your yes. gums to be made whole. Thank you, To Jesus. be healed. Thank you. I don't know what you need. Amen. If you need a restructure. Reconstruction, yes. creative miracle. Yes. I'm in agreement with it Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Pain in your gums yes. and in your jaw. Amen. Somebody that's got pain in your jaw, Amen. even into Thank your neck. You, in the name yes. of Jesus, yes. Yes. Father, yes. Yes. we call Thank you healed. Healing from head to in foot. Whole. In healing. Jesus' name. The phone Holy number is right there. 877-281-6297. Yes. Yes. It's important. And if you guys get anything, go ahead. If it's important you. for you to tell somebody. Yes. Scripture it says they overcame it. by the blood of the Lamb yes. and the word of their testimony. Yes. It's a two exactly part thing. Right. Yes. You need to tell somebody what the Lord has Thank done for you. you. And yes. He's healing people yes. right now. I, I, I just sense right now, all over the middle Thanks. part of your body, yeah, your back, yeah. across yeah. your yes. shoulders, yes. You, you feel a tingling and a warmth yes. right now across your back and your shoulders. Praise now begin God. to move. Glory. Praise God. Begin to move. Glory. Begin to, Glory. Begin to do what God is telling Glory. you to do. He may be telling you to Glory. do something crazy like get up and do jumping jacks. There you go. I don't know what it yeah. is, yeah. but whatever he, it seemed yeah. crazy to go yeah. dip in the Jordan River. Sure it did. <laughs> That's right. What's that going to do? What's that going right. to do? Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Yes. And then let us know about yes. it yes. in Jesus name. Here's a, here's another one. This is a whole new person. Um, uh, I receive new teeth. I, I, I confess Praise it. God. Here's one right now. It says, listen to this. Um, uh, oh, wait, they're, they're coming in so fast I can't keep up with them. <laughs> Let me find it again. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, here's a wrist, a wrist right here. Uh, I'm getting more movement in my wrist. They're moving their wrist right Thank now. You, Jesus. And they're getting more movement Jesus. in their yes. wrist as we're, as we're standing here talking. Listen, it's still happening to you all around yeah. the world, from the top to the bottom, yeah. all the way around the middle, Praise all across God. the United States. There's a healing Hallelujah. flow Praise because God. there's yes. healing right now, right yes. here. Healing is yes. here. Keep calling. We're going to keep praying for you in the yes. next three or four minutes. Let's have uh, David and them sing the song Healing is Here yes. and you receive it Thank right now. You. Amen. Healing is here.
People Amen. are receiving it. Amen. I'm looking at Amen. comments here online, and Christina had two, both long bones in her arms broken, and she mm -hmm. is. She said, "I heard my spirit flap your arms like," and she's <laughs> flapping her That's arms great. with no pain. People are being healed all across the That's country. Great. Severe acid reflux, dizziness. Here's one for their foot to be normal. Here's Charles for their son with ADHD, anxiety, and learning mm -hmm. disorders. People are hurting. Yeah. The, the same power that yes. raised that little baby in yes. right. jungles yes, up. Sir. That's right. Will heal and touch you. That's right. Let me ask you a question. Are you saved? Amen. Because if you're saved, it's the, the sozo, the same word for salvation of your soul is also used yes. in healing. Yes. Healing is part of your covenant. Yes, it Ooh. is. It belongs to yes, you as a believer. You need to know that the healing power of God is at work in your body Thank you, Lord. right now. Thank you, Father. Even if you don't sense a change like yes. the one with the arms, yes. the healing power of God went into your body today yes. right. and That's is right. at work right now. That's right. Thank you. In Thank Jesus' you. mighty name. Thank you, Thank you for telling us. Here's, yes. here's, more, here's uh, more people. Dizziness is dissipating in their body Praise already. God. Just Praise in the time God. that we've been talking, Praise the Lord. dizziness Praise has already dissipated. Praise the Lord. We agree with you in Jesus' Praise name. Lord. 30 seconds, yes. little yes. final yes. comment or so before we go out. Well, God told us in Isaiah 54, he said, fear and terror will come. They'll surround you, but he said, not by me. <laughs> they're not by me. Fear is not from God. Terror is not from God. They'll try to come, but they're not from God. And you've Amen. got the authority, the dominion, the power the spiritual authority to get rid of it. Run it off in the name of Jesus because fear and faith don't live in the same they house. Sure don't. Amen. Terry Mize, and he is so honored to have you here today. Yes. We're so Thank grateful you. that you're with us. Don't forget morning. Don't forget morning prayer every morning, 930 Eastern. Call back and tell them what happened today in the afternoon program. We're going to go out with a song today and we'll see you tomorrow. Hank Kuhneman is going to be here. You don't want to miss Wonderful. that. We'll see you then. Stay.